Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my tutorials. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create this drone that you see right here. So when you press the um, activate key, you'll take control of the drone. And so you can see in the bottom right there, it pops up a little camera view and I can see whatever the drone sees and I can look around. And then of course I can fly. And then in the bottom or kind of in the middle right of the drone camera, there is an altitude which shows how high the drone is. So if I go up, it goes up and down, I go down. And then there's also the DST, which is the destination, or sorry, the distance. And so that's how far away it's looking. So if I look over this way, you can see it goes up. And then if I look down towards the ground, it goes down. And you know, you can just fly the drone around wherever you want. And then you can just leave it somewhere. So if I fly it over here and then look at this thing and then leave it, I can now go back and control this guy. You can see the drone sits there and hovers. And then again, I can take control over it and fly it around back to the player somewhere. And so, yeah, it's a pretty simple little system, but it does take a little bit to get set up. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm gonna be doing this from a brand new project. So I'm gonna open up the Epic Game Launcher. Oh yeah, and one thing worth mentioning here, um, the this map you see in the background. This is just this abandoned factory map. If you're interested in it, you can search for it and find it on the marketplace, but you absolutely don't need it to follow along with this tutorial. I just kind of added it to give us something cool to look at um, for the demo. And then the other thing is the drone itself. So if you look at the drone, it is over here. So this is a model. I'll add a link to it in the description of where I downloaded it from. It's just a free model online, um, but you also don't need this model. You can use any model that you want. All right, so back in the Epic Game Launcher, I'm gonna launch a new instance of Unreal. So I'm on version 4.26.0. Um, I always recommend being on whichever version I'm on or newer just to try to avoid any issues with older versions. And so let this launch and then we'll select games and hit next. And then we're gonna be using the third person template and hit next. And then of course we want blueprints, no starter content. And I will just call this drone tutorial and then go ahead and create the project. And then while that's launching, I'm gonna move this guy over here. And then let me go back to my folder on my other computer. Okay. So over here, we just have the default uh, third person template, as you can see. So the first thing we need to do is create this drone so that we can kind of fly it around. So back in the content folder, let's right click and make a new folder. And we'll just call this drone. And then we'll just put everything related to the drone inside of here. So the first thing we need to do is import the model. So again, if you look in the description of this video, there'll be a link to where I got this file from. Um, I don't want to like attach this file directly to the YouTube video just because it does have like copyright stuff on it. Um, and it's not like I own it. So you have to go download it from the source. But again, if it's like no longer there or something, it's not a big deal. You can still follow along with this tutorial. Um, it's just the mesh I'm using to make it look a little bit nicer, but you can use any static mesh you want. You can even just use a sphere or a cube if you really want to, to get started. Uh, but anyways, so once you download it, you'll have something that looks like this. And then I'm going to be using, I think it's this guy is the one that I use, this drone FBX 7.4 binary. And so I'm going to drag this in here. And then when you do that, um, you'll get this window. And then for this specific model, we want to rotate it, um, I think it's, I think it's negative, or I think it's, I don't remember if it's negative or positive. I have to fix this, but we want to rotate 90 degrees and then we want to say import all. And the reason we did the rotation, I'll show you if I did it correct. So if you open it up, um, or if you're using a different model, you want to make sure, let me slow down this camera. Okay. Well, I think we did that right. So you want to make sure that the front of the model is facing along the x-axis. So you can see down here at the bottom uh, left, the x-axis is going from left to right, and this model is facing along the x-axis here. Um, so that's really important. So if you're using your own model or if you're using this model, make sure that whatever model you're using is facing along the x-axis. Okay, so now that we have that, um, let's actually make a new folder in here and call it assets. And then inside of here, we will just throw this stuff. And then there's one other thing we want. Um, and this will actually be in the description as well. If you want to use the same one I am using, you absolutely don't have to, but 
feel free. So I just drew this little HUD. If you look at it, it's just, well, you can't actually see it there because it's a white background, but it's that little HUD that shows up. Um, so this, this will be a download link in the description if you want to use the same one. Just go ahead and drag it down into the content folder. And then we just want to open this up. And so there you can see that's what it looks like. And this is just something I drew real quick in Photoshop. Um, but you can use whatever type of HUD you want, or you can make your own. Um, but the one thing you want to change for the HUD is we want to change it to uh, the compression settings to user interface. So this is going to show on the UI. And then we also want to change the texture group to UI. And then save it. And then we come back here. And now we got it looking a little bit more like what we want. And then now we can actually create the blueprint for the drone itself. So if we come back up to the drone folder, let's right click and make a new blueprint class. And then for this, we want to select pawn because we're actually going to be possessing this thing. Um, so we want to select pawn and then we'll just call it BP underscore drone like so. And then let's open this guy up. All right, so inside of here, we want to add some components. So at the top left, we can actually just delete this default scene route because we're not going to use it. Um, oh, I guess we can't delete it yet because we need to add another one. So hit the drop down, And the first thing we want to add is a box collision. So if you search box, we want box collision. And so this is going to be the collision that use, that's used for our drone. And then we can take this box and drag it onto the default scene route, and it will replace it. And then we want to add a skeletal mesh for our drone. Now, if you're using a drone that isn't a skeletal mesh, because you, as you can see here, this is a skeletal mesh, like it has it has bones to it and stuff. Um, but if you're using a static mesh for your drone, then you'd obviously want to add the static mesh component. But for this one, we're using the skeletal mesh because it's a skeletal mesh. So we'll add this. Oops. Just like so, and then the next thing we want, or actually, let's fill this out first. So for the skeletal mesh, um, we just want to select it. And we want to search for our drone that we imported. And again, it's really important here that it's facing along the x-axis. So you can see it's facing forward, which is good. And so for this box, we can actually change it to make it a little, um, a little closer fitting. So let's change this to like 16, 40, and 8. Oops, I did it. 40 and 8, like so. So now it kind of better fits the drone. And then let's see. So I guess that's probably OK for right now, because we will eventually need to add a scene capture component for this. But for right now, let's just get it so we can actually fly around um, fly around the drone. So the one thing we need for that is going to be something called a floating pawn movement. And so what this component does is it basically allows you to add or to say, hey, I press the forward button, and then the floating pawn movement component will figure out, oh, okay, I need to move forward. And then it also has settings over here on the right for like the maximum speed, the acceleration, the deceleration, and some other pr pretty useful things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust a few of these to make it feel a little bit more uh, like a drone, because right now, if you were to fly this around, and you can play with these numbers, um, it would be like you'd start holding down forward and it would immediately start moving forward. And then when you let go, it would immediately stop, which isn't really how drones work. They're kind of, you know, floaty. So we're going to we're going to bump down the max speed to something like 300. Um, and then the acceleration, we're going to bump down to like 2000. And then the deceleration, we're going to bump all the way down to 500. And this is what's going to make it have that nice floaty feel to it. And then for the turning boost, we can set this down to one as well. And I'm not going to go too much into detail about what these do, because you can just play with them and see what they do pretty easily by by playing with the numbers um, once we're done with the tutorial. These are just the ones I used. Um, okay, and so now we need to set this guy up so that we can actually possess it. So if we're gonna need to do a little bit of stuff in our third person character. So go back to your uh, main window and then select the third person character or whichever character you happen to be using and open up his blueprint. So inside of here, um, what we're gonna do is basically just give him a reference to the drone, and then he's just always gonna have that reference. You might wanna set this up differently in your game, like depending on how you exactly want the drone to work, but essentially when you want him to be able to control the drone, he just needs to have a reference to it somewhere. Like maybe he's gonna overlap with it, or maybe you know he finds it in the world and he has to be looking at it and you do a line trace and then you save the reference that way. But 
for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to add a reference ourselves for this tutorial. So over here on the left, hit the new uh, variable button. And then we want to type in row. That's going to be the name. And then for the variable type up here, we want to change this to um, BP drone object reference. And then we want to be able to set this um, in the editor, like over here. We want to be able to click on this guy and select it over here. So in order to do that, we need to set it to instance editable. And then we can also set it to blueprint read only since we don't want it to change at runtime. And then we can also set it to private so that it can't be accessed outside of this blueprint. And now that we've done that, we can compile and come back here to our world. And you can see on the right here in the details panel for the player, we have a drone, um, a drone option, but currently there's no, there's no drones to select because none of them exist in the world. So we just need to take this drone and I'm just going to drag it over here somewhere in the world. And then when we come back and select our character and we hit the drone drop down, you can see we can now select that drone. So now this third person character is linked to this drone, or in other words, he has a reference to this drone. So back in our third person character now, we can set it up so that when we press a button, he will take possession of the drone. So up here in the um, toolbar at the top, let's go to edit and project settings, because the first thing we need to do is set up our controls. And then let me actually look at what I did exactly on my other project too, so I can keep these the same. Um, okay, so in the input section over here on the left, I think we actually just need to add a action mapping and then hit this little plus button here. And we will just call this, um, I don't know, like toggle drone. And then you can set this to whatever button you want. This is basically just gonna be the button that activates and deactivates the drone. So I'm gonna set it to F. And if you're on 4.26, you can just hit this little key looking button and then press the button on your keyboard and it'll automatically select it. If you're on an older version, you'll have to drop down and search for it. Um, oops. So yeah, we just have toggle drone set to F. And then while we're here, let's also add the axis mappings for moving up and down. And let me look what I did on my other one. Right, so you can see we have like move forward and move, move right, and we have turning, but for drones, you can also go directly up or directly down. So we wanna add axis mappings for those. So we'll hit this plus button and we will just call this uh, move up. And then we really only need one axis mapping actually because this move up can do it for both. So the first button we wanna add is E and that's gonna move us up. So we'll leave this scale as positive one, but we also wanna add another button for Q and this one we wanna to set to negative one. So if we press E, it's gonna call move event or move up with a positive scale value. And if we hold down Q, it's gonna call move up with a negative scale value. And you'll see what I mean once we uh, start coding that part. Okay, so this is all we need to do here for the input. So we can go back to our third person character and then we wanna to go to the event graph and we want to make use of that toggle uh, drone uh, key. So search for input action toggle drone. So this is going to get pressed whenever, or this is going to get called whenever we press the F key. And the first thing we want to do here is we want to make sure that we stop moving our character because if he's currently running and he presses that button, we want to make sure that he stops and he doesn't keep running when he goes to possess the drone. So we can say, um, actually, we can just drag in the character movement component. And we can say stop movement immediately. So this is going to stop all movement. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to activate the drone. So we can drag in our drone, which if you remember, it's just a reference to that drone. And we need a way to tell the drone that we want to activate. So in order to do that, we need to make a function or an event inside of the drone blueprint. So let's go over here to the drone and we'll just go to the event graph. And I'm just gonna delete all this for right now because we don't really need it. And then over here, I'm trying to think. Actually, let's just make this a function instead of an event because it's gonna be a little complex. And so I kind of want to wrap it up inside of a nice little function. So I'll make a function and we will call this um, activate. And then the parameter that it needs to take in is essentially the who's doing the activation. So the, the person, right? So make a new parameter here. And then we want to make it of type character because it's going to be some sort of character that's going to be interacting with this drone. And we will just call this the 
interactor. All right, so we'll come back and fill this out here in just a second. But for right now, let's go back to the third person character and then drag off a drone and call activate like so. And then for the interactor, we can just pass in ourselves. So we can right click and say git ref to self and pass that in. So basically what we're saying is when they press the F key, we want to stop movement on the character just to make sure he stops running or doing whatever he's doing. And then we want to activate the drone and we pass in ourself as the person who did the activation. All right, so now let's double click on this function and start filling this out. So when the drone is activated, well, we first want to make sure that the drone is not already activated. Um, because if you press this key and the drone obviously is already activated, then we don't want to do anything. So we need to make an enumeration to keep track of the current state of the drone. So let's come back here. I'm going to hit browse just to go back to the content folder. And then let's make a new enum. So we can right click and say blueprints enumeration. And we will call this the e drone state. Now let's open this guy up. All right, and so inside of here, we just want to add two states. So I'm going to hit that button twice, and we will call this idle. And then the other one we will call possessed. And we can save and close this. And the reason I made this an enum as opposed to just using a bool, because I'm sure somebody is asking that question right now, is just for in the future, if you have more states that your drone wants to be in, like maybe you have a some sort of AI state where he kind of patrols on his own, or maybe you have a state where he's like in stealth mode or whatever, then it would be a lot easier just to add those new states here and handle them in code accordingly than having to make bools for all these different states. So that's the reason I made an enum. So we can close this. And then back in our drone, we can add a variable to keep track of the state. So we'll add a variable and we will call this the drone state. And then for the type, we will switch it to an E drone state. And then what we want to do is we want to drag in, or actually let's set this to private first, like so. And again, the reason we set things to private is just so they can't be accessed outside of this class, just to keep things better organized. And then I like to use this thing right here. If you hit this drop down, you can say show access specifiers. And you can see what that does is it adds the private or the protect protected or sorry, the private or the public keyword in front of variables so you can easily see um, you know, what, what they are. And so let's drag in this drone state and we can say switch. And so we only wanna activate it if it is currently idle. So we can drag off this idle and do the rest of our stuff. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to save a copy of our of the person that's interacting with us because we're gonna need that whenever we, whenever they stop interacting with us. So we can take this and say promote to variable and that will create a new variable for us. And we'll just call this the player pond because that's basically what it is. And we wanna hook that up to idle. I'm just gonna double click to add some reroute nodes here like so. And then we can say get controller and we want to cast this to a player controller. So we'll say cast to player controller, like so. And then from here, we want to save this value as well, um, except this one we can just save as a local variable because we just only need it inside of this function. So we can right click and say promote to local variable. And then down here, we will just call this the player controller. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to, um, possess the drone. So we want to change the player controller from possessing the player's pawn, which is that mannequin, over to possessing the drone itself. So we can say, um, drag in our player controller, and we can say possess, oops, say possess. And then the thing we want to possess is, of course, ourselves. So we can right click and say get ref to self, like so. And then finally, well, so maybe we can run it real quick so you can see kind of what's going on. Um, 
But I guess one thing we should do real quick. We want to set the drone state finally to possessed because he's now possessed. So let's go ahead and run this real quick so we can kind of see where we are. So we press play and then we press the F key. You can see we are now possessing this drone and you can see a couple things happened. Well, mainly the view changed from where the player was, like using the player's camera over to the drone. And it's kind of just use this default view of wherever the drone is. If you see, if I eject here real quick, if I press F8, you can see we're literally just on top of the drone. Um, but we don't actually want that. We don't want the camera to change. We want the camera to stay at the location of the character. Because if you remember by the project, when you when you go and you possess the, let me just run it real quick. When you go and you possess the drone, um, the player's camera doesn't actually move, right? It just kind of spawns a new camera in the bottom right. So in order to get that behavior, um, it's a little wonky because when you call possess, when we call possess here, the engine automatically tries to switch the camera over to the camera of the thing you're possessing. Um, but we don't actually want that. So what we're going to do is after we possess it, we're going to switch the camera back to the player's camera. So to do that, we can say, dragging our player controller again, and we can say set view target with len, like so. And then the new target is going to be our old player's controller's target, right? So we can drag in again our player controller and we can say get, uh, get player camera manager, which is what this takes in, like so. So now we're saying after you possess the drone, go ahead and set your view target back to the old player's view target. And so now if we run this and we press F, you can see nothing appears to happen, but I can no longer move because I'm no longer possessing this uh, mannequin character. I'm actually now possessing the drone. So this is what we want. So the next thing we need to do is make it so that we can actually fly around with the drone. So over here in the event graph, let's start adding some events to handle our input. So uh, right click and say, what is this called? Input axis move up. And make sure you get this uh, white one up here and not these green ones. So let's say this one. And so this gets called, well, this basically is called every frame and tells you whether or not the up or down input's being pressed. So if we're pressing up input, this axis value is gonna be one. If we're holding down down input, it's gonna be negative one. So all we can, all we need to do here is we can drag in our floating pawn movement and we can just say add input vector. And then it wants to know the direction of the input. So the direction of the input in this case, since it's up, it's just gonna be the world up axis. So we can get that by saying uh, vector up. So vector up is just a vector of zero, zero, one. And then we wanna multiply that, oops, multiply that by whatever this axis value is. So that way, if it's down, it will be flipped around to going down. So now if we play this again, and we come over here and we, well, I guess we don't even have to go over there. If we just press F, you can see, now when I press E and Q, I can move this drone up and down. And it can go through the floor apparently as well. So we'll have to fix that. Um, but it goes up and down, which is kind of cool. Um, so let me fix this going through the ground thing. So we want to select this box here at the top left, and we want to switch this to uh, block all dynamic, compile and save, and then let's try this again. So if I press F and then these buttons, there we go. Now it actually collides with the ground. And you can see, well, I don't know how well you can see it, but if you're following along, you can tell when I let go of E or when you let go of Q or whatever, it doesn't just stop immediately. It kind of floats or slows down over time. And that's what these values that we changed at the beginning kind of do, because if I change the deceleration, let's change this back up to 8,000, just to kind of see. So if I possess, and now when I let go of E and Q, it just immediately stops, right? So it doesn't look very drone-like. It doesn't really look like it's flying. So that's what these values are. So you can play with those. Just kind of wanted to point that out. And so that's how we move our drones. So now we just need to do the same thing for moving left and right and moving forward and backwards. So we can just right click, say input access, move right. And then I'm just going to copy this because it's more or less the same. Except this time, um, 
This time, the vector that we want to move along is going to be our right vector. So we can delete this, and we can say it actor right vector. And you might be asking, why did we not instead here, like why did we not use get actor up vector? Um, and, it, and the reason we did that is, well, it kind of depends on what you want to do. Because if we do, if we do this, so if I do this, then when you press E, it's going to go up in the direction of the drone's up vector. Whereas if we do this, it's going to go up in the direction of the world's up vector. And so the difference, like right now, it doesn't actually make a difference because those two vectors are the same. But if you ever had a case where you had your drone rotated like this, like maybe you change it later so that when he flies forward, the drone rotates like this. Um, if you were to press E to go up, he would actually go up along this blue vector if you had it set to this, because it would go along the drone's up vector. Um, and maybe that's what you want, maybe it's not. But if you use the world up vector, then it would go along this blue vector, right? So it's a little bit different depending on what you want to do here. Um, but most of the time when you have something like this and you go up, um, games have it so that you go up along the world up vector. So that up is always up. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to reset this back. I just kind of wanted to point that out because I figured somebody would probably ask about it. Okay, I'll just set this back to zero. But yeah, so I'm using this one for that reason. And so that's our right. And we also want to do our forward. So we'll say input access move forward. And then again, I'm just going to copy this because it's mostly the same. And then except for this one, we want to use the actor's forward vector. So we'll say get actor forward vector. And hook that up and hook that up like so. And so let's give this a try now. Let me just file save all. Let me hit play. So it's going to be a little weird to fly this around because you don't have a camera view. But you should be able to tell when you press left and right and up and down and forward and backwards that it's doing what you're telling it to do. So the next thing now is we need to be able to turn it. And we also need to be able to obviously have that little render target in the bottom right, which I'm kind of saving for later. So let's do the turn real quick. And then after that, we'll end this part of the video and go on to part two. So for the turning, we want to say input access turn, like so. And then actually, let me double check. Yeah, input access turn. And then so for this, we're going to be using this to like y'all the, um, the drone left and right. So that's actually pretty simple. We can just say add controller y'all input, uh, like so. And I think if we run this now, I don't think it will actually work quite yet. Let me see here. Let's press F. And then so if you move the mouse left and right, you can see it doesn't actually y'all anything. Um, and that's because we need to come up here to the class defaults. I always get this confused. Let me double check. Yeah. And then we need to search for y'all. And then we want to select this use control rotation y'all. So now if we run this and we activate, you can see now when I move the mouse, it's now moving that drone left and right. And so if I turn the drone and then hold down W, he flies in the direction, like he flies forward, right? So this is the type of behavior that we're looking for here. All right, so now that we have this, um, the next thing we need to do is kind of set up our render target so that we can see the drone, like see what the drone's seen in the bottom right. And then obviously there's a little bit more to that as well, but we will continue um, in the next part of this video. So I'll see you guys in part two.